Welcome back to Cause Talk Radio by Rashpixel.fm. I'm your host, Megan Strand with Engage for Good. You can find full show notes and additional resources for today's episode at engageforgood.com. It's been a minute, but I'm back with Joe Waters of SelfishGiving.com for The Joe Show. Joe and I spend this episode sharing our thoughts about which COVID pivots have struck us as particularly clever or creative from companies that are creating new opportunities because of COVID, like what Major League Baseball is doing with cardboard fans in the stands, to initiatives that are bound and determined to stay the course, even given the pandemic, like Dutch Bros fundraising effort for MDA. We also give a little sneak peek into our new learning club about the future of retail on August 27th, which is free for anyone to join. I know I enjoyed this conversation with my favorite colleague, Joe Waters, and I hope you do too. Well, hello, my friend, Joe Waters. How are you? Hello, Megan Strand. It's so nice to talk to you again during this pandemic summer of Oz. I know. When's the last time you and I chatted? I think it was, I think it was honestly like May because after that I jumped into the Halo Awards and we just did a ton of Halo podcasts. So it's been a while since the Joe show, which is kind of sad. It's been a while. And you were concerned at one point that maybe the virus would be transmitted over audio. I was so really like, worried about that. Yeah. And you yeah. said, you know, if there's anyone that has the virus, it's, it's Joe you. Waters. It's Joe yeah, Waters. It's Joe Waters. So. He spends all yeah. that time in his in his yacht and Yeah, that's right. In my yacht and right. So, eating all, eating thank all God the dirt. plants on thank God plants are contagious, right? I'd be, be a, big trouble. Or or Yorkies. Yes. Yes. That would be <laughs> devastating. That would be devastating if dogs Charlie. Uh, it would be devastating, yeah, right. honestly. If yeah, dogs had COVID. How sad would that be? I know, I know. I know. How's well, your doggy? She's good. How's Charlie? Yeah. I feel like Charlie's like our little mascot for the show, really. Absolutely. Yeah. He's like he's, a cause talk you know, radio hat or something. That's right. He's always barking in the background, always know, giving us perfect. feedback, right? Always letting <laughs> us know when we're doing something wrong. You move know? along, move so, along. Yeah. That's right. That, and I find when I'm talking, he sleeps best. <laughs> <laughs> we all do, Joe. We all do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> People put on this podcast so they can get a good night's sleep. <laughs> That's what Deb says to me at night. Can you talk to me? <laughs> well, since it's been a while since you've been on the show, let's talk about what you've seen, like what's happening in the social impact space that you've seen that you think is interesting. You know, these, well, these COVID pivots. What have you seen That's that right. you think is interesting? That's right. Well, you know, there's, there's some interesting things, I, I, I think, out there right now when we talk about corporate partnerships because, you know, we see uh, programs that are leaning into the COVID, right, and saying, like, wow, this is an opportunity. And one of the examples I really liked is we've seen at a variety of major league baseball parks these cardboard cutouts that they're now oh, yeah. doing that are raising money for different causes. Um, Wait, the cardboard cutouts are? How is that working? Yeah, well, some of them are. Um, You know, so what it is, is that people buy the cutouts and, you know, they have their their picture on them. And then either some of the money or all of the money is going to a cause. Oh, I didn't Um, know that. Yeah, but some of them have done something interesting. Actually, I may have something in my newsletter this week on it. Um, ASPCA is doing something where it's cardboard cardboard cutouts of different dogs oh, that cute. they're putting in the Yeah. So they're having fun with it. So, you know, I use that, Megan, as an example of organizations I think that are leaning into the COVID to say, yeah. like, hey, you know, the COVID is an opportunity, right? I love how and you're calling then, it the COVID. The COVID. The COVID. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think it is. I think it's an opportunity where, you know, uh, people are uh, leaning in and they're saying, hey, because this is happening, what can we do instead that we wouldn't be able to do? Right. And this is a perfect there example cardboard of that with cutouts cardboard of cutouts. Fans. Yeah. No, I love that. That's right. That's right. Now, but after people that are leaning into it, I also think there are some great examples of people who are plowing through COVID. Mm. And what that means is they're saying, you know what? I don't care if COVID is out there. I'm going to continue doing this program because I'm highly supportive of it. And I think a great example of that is, uh, you know, we have Dutch Brother Coffees uh, pretty much at a very volatile time during the pandemic back in May, uh, continue with their fundraiser for Muscular Dystrophy Association, which I really think is impressive because, you know, you got to think to yourself like stores. You know, the stores, they probably have long lines outside, right? Because people can't stay inside and stuff like that. But Dutch Brothers, can, uh, you know, continued serving people. And despite uh, the COVID, 
and what was going on. They still raised 1.39. Which is 1.39 million. Well, I mean, that's impressive because they are not a huge company. I mean, they're, they're growing and they, I believe their headquarters are in Medford, Oregon or something like that, like Southern Oregon. And it's mostly around here, but here's the advantage that they have, Joe. It's a hundred percent drive-through. That's like a hundred percent drive-through. You can walk up, but it's also, it's a hundred percent drive-through. They've got like, um, you know, I'm, I shouldn't say that it's a hundred percent drive through. Every single Dutch Brothers I've ever seen around here is drive through. So maybe they oh, have a couple walk in locations, but by and large, it's kind of a drive through thing. I didn't know that. Both sides of the window. So you know, kind of like Starbucks. I'm sure you know this. Like they close mm-hmm. their locations, but at least the Starbucks by my house, they mostly kept their drive through open. So that yep. was a business that could keep going. But interestingly, right. to your point, um, you know, point of sale, I think is really fascinating right now. And mm. you probably saw and read about uh, the fact that there was a coin shortage too. And yep. a lot of these point of sale programs that either weren't planning on doing like a coin roundup or a roundup program decided to start doing a roundup program Mm because they had this coin, this national coin shortage. And they were like, well, we don't have any change to give you. So would you like to round it up maybe to an existing partner? Or maybe they created something specifically for that. But I know of a couple of examples. Like I know Murphy USA and Boys and Girls Clubs did that. I know Taco Bell. Yeah. Added a like added roundup. They've always done roundup in certain locations, but they didn't do it in other. Like maybe I think they added it in the drive through uh, yeah. because of the coin shortage, which was pretty fascinating. So it was kind of right. nice to see that. There, here's another. I mean, I feel like every other day there's like, oh, I didn't realize that was going to be and be impacted by COVID, but here it was. You know, who would have thunk I, that a coin shortage would have happened? I don't even know why it happened. Do you? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. Uh, but you know what's interesting about the Murphy USA example? is that um, how much they raised. Their original goal for that program was $500,000. They've already hit a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. they're doing really well. So I think well. that's really... And for those people and who don't just, know, the Murphy USA is like a gas station convenience store. And I actually don't right. even... I think that was all... I don't think they were raising money at the pump. I think that was all convenience store. I think so too. Yeah, I think so too. Crazy. Because I think they were doing a roundup, but I also think they were doing, a, you know, a register program, you know, yeah, where they were I, asking people for a dollar and stuff like that. I think that's even going to bolster roundup even more. I mean, roundup is getting real popular as we've talked about yeah. on this podcast. I think I was actually the one who called it here first saying that roundup that's is going right. to be really Absolutely. popular. Yeah. Um, but I think that's even going to make it more popular. But then, I mean, on the other side of that coin, like, Pretty sure Macy's isn't doing any roundups right now. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, or maybe they are, but their foot traffic is so down that, you know, that's a well, harder it, situation. It's interesting, Megan. I went through a lot of times when I give presentations on this, I talk about 16 different types of businesses that you should go after besides the usual suspects. You know, when a lot of times we think of like retailers, department stores and stuff like that. Right, right. And of those 16 right now, there are really only two that are incredibly viable. One, convenience store chains, yep. a.k.a. Murphy USA, yep. and supermarkets, right? Oh, yeah. Supermarkets are a great example of... of and anything uh, drive through I feel like. Yes, anything drive through Yeah, definitely. And, you know, they're really made for something like that. And I think, you know, which David made a great point in the article he wrote for Forbes, is that the coin shortage just really made these Roundup programs very popular. Yeah. One, th- yeah. there's a, now a business reason for doing them as well. So it'll be interesting to see if um, they stick with that. So no, that's, that's right. it's interesting. And actually, I'm going to give a little plug here. I don't even know if you know about this yet, but um, mm. September, we just decided today, September 24th, we're going to do an Engage for Good member meetup talking specifically about point of sale programs. And it's really intended for people who like have a point of sale program or, right. you know, we're planning to do one in Q1 of next year and are kind right. of just looking at each other like, what should we do? What are other people doing? So it's kind of like a, we'll have a couple little panelists that'll talk for just a couple minutes about what they're doing. Not That's that it's right. the right answer, just that it's what they're doing. And then people will break people up into little groups and just to have little discussions. So you should oh, join really us for like that. that so yeah. Well, I will because, you know, I think it's very important for me to join you on the 24th of September because because on the 27th of December, September is my birthday. So <gasps> yes. if we could plan, I mean, if there's any way on to the have 24th, a Joe you party, plan, that's right. You could plan for a celebration. You know what you can do? You can ship me a cake, ship me the candles. <laughs> I'll prepare the cake. <laughs> In my house, right? I'll Don't put the candles me. on it. So. <laughs> well, have you seen this? There's all these great examples too where people are doing like movie night and they're sending people like popcorn and stuff like that. Like, you know, so they can actually experience it together. You know, my with favorite one that I've seen? Drinks. 
that uh, my team member Allie totally laughed at me about, but the, I've seen, have you seen the mini campfire one? They send you like no. a teeny little tea light and then they send you like baby little, little baby marshmallows and like a toothpick and then yeah. like a, you know, a little Hershey bar. And I don't oh, know what like they do that. for the graham crackers. Maybe they do like honey grams or something. And then you're supposed to toast the little mini marshmallow on your toothpick over your tea light. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> it's so cute. I love little the boys too. Campfire. Just the way right, you talk so about cute. it. Yeah. <laughs> Sound I think like Charlie would like that. The yeah, Munchkin. Right, yeah, Munchkin yeah. campfire s'more party. Like that. I know. Like I that. totally ripped that off of somebody else. So you might see that at one of our events. Just I know. I, think I love that idea for something like that. Well, actually, okay. So, so since we're doing a little promo, let's do another yeah. little promo for what's happening. Right. If you're listening to this podcast on the day it re- on the day it releases, which is August 26th, then tomorrow yeah. is what? What's happening tomorrow, Joe? The 27th, which is one month from my birthday, (laughs) is our newly revised uh, book club, which we're calling a learning club now, Megan. Yes, because books are hard and a lot of work. That's right. So we decided, well, you decided, this was your idea. I'm going to give you full credit for this. So (laughs) you decided that this should be, you saw this somewhere else and you said, let's just give people like some articles. Like we'll choose a general topic, which is what? What's our topic? Future of retail. Future as it retail. relates to corporate partnerships, of course, because right. we, you know we're very interested in the future of retail, but we want it related to our niche here, which is corporate right. partnerships. And so we have what, like a podcast and some articles, yep. one we book, podcasts, if you really want to go hardcore. Yep. That's right. That's right. But the whole idea with the learning club is that everyone brings their own insights. So what's really required here is not that you have uh, read a specific book or something like that, but that you actually have some thoughts about this, right? Yeah. That you're saying, hey, I've read about this and this is what I think the future of retail is as it relates to corporate partnerships. So or here's I'm really my excited question. about this. Here's my brain right. question. Yeah. yeah. So I think this is really exciting because I yeah. think, you know, as we talk about this, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Yeah. So uh, for if for some reason you are not listening to this on August 26th and you've missed it, I think we'll probably be doing another one again. So uh, make, yeah, sure, no, I'm make sure you pay attention I mean, to Joe's newsletter. And, and folks, engage let's for good be website. honest here. We had great participation with the book club. Everyone went. And I have a lot of people out there that I think own the books that we had in the book club, but never read them and certainly never showed up to uh, the reading club. And last time that we had the reading club, uh, not a lot of people were there, just some of your favorite people like me, David Hasekiel, et cetera, and Megan cried. Okay, Megan cried because there was no one there. So this week, we're going to try to prevent this. We're going to try to prevent this. We're going to try to stop this. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't Megan who cried. It was me who cried. Right? And then I he pinned a, it on me. I have such a need, right? I have such a need for affection and for popularity. And uh, so we're really hoping that this week we get a crowd for our love. I think we club. will. We already have 100 people signed up. So if we don't get a crowd off of that, I'm really not sure what is going to draw a crowd because that's it would be sad. If we don't get a crowd this time, we're both going to cry. We're both okay? going to try, yeah, simultaneously yeah. on command. That's right. And if you said you were going to go, we're going to email you. <laughs> we're going to call you crying. and be like, where That's were right. you? <laughs> That's right. We're going to be crying when we call you. That's how we're going to get people engaged. Anyways, oh, my so. gosh. Okay, yeah, well, learn- enough- yeah, go ahead. No, I think this, you know, I'm really excited about the concept. And I think, yeah, me too. you know, books bit. books can be tough, you know what I mean? And and I love books and I know you love books and a lot of people love books, but it's tough to read a book sometimes within the allotted period. So exactly. um, I think this will be a little bit better. And hey, let's face it too. We're in many instances, we're reading, uh, you know, nonfiction business books. Yeah. And a lot it's of not these, what you want to read before you go to bed. At least yeah, that's that's what right. I and a lot of these can make, you know, a lot of these are great articles, not great books, right? Exactly. So, um, you know, I think this will work out well. I'm excited about it. Me too. Me too. So hopefully yeah. you guys listening can join us at least on maybe on this one. But if you miss this one, then maybe on a future one. So, yeah. um, okay. So what else have you seen that you think is interesting? Well, you know, I was talking about some of the different ideas where I think you have people who are plowing through COVID. Yep. Yep. I think you have people who are thinking differently about opportunities. Yep. And then another example I really like is this is a creative example where I think people are getting really creative and saying, okay, what can we do, right? While we're social distancing, um, what can we do to raise money and have some fun? And I love this idea included in my newsletter last week. And I think it's Sprecher, um, S-P-R-E-C-H-E-R. How would you say that, Megan? Yeah, I think it's I'd Sprecher. Say, yep. Sprecher Brewing Company um, teamed up with Cedar Crest Ice Cream. And on National Root Beer Float Day, they gave away 
thousands of free floats, Megan, in an attempt to break the world record. Now, I don't know if they broke the world record or not. Oh. I, I didn't see that. But one of the things I did know, and I heard from the folks at Feeding America in Easton, uh, Wisconsin, was that they did a fundraiser in conjunction with this, and they raised a modest amount of money, 6500 bucks. Nice. Yeah, so I thought that was great. So I think it was kind of, you know what, this is a great example. It's kind of like the IHOP example of Pancake Day. Right. Yep. You know, with, yep. so that people are giving away at, at IHOP, they give pancakes away for free and they say, hey, if you, you know, we're doing something for Children's Miracle Network today. If you want to make a donation, that would be great. And I think that's exactly how it worked here. People were so like, hey, they, did. they free- gave away free root, root beer floats and that's right. Yeah. Allowed people and to make a donation if they want. That's right. And what I loved about it when you saw, um, you know, when you saw the, there's a video I included that showed how they did a great job. People were in their cars, they pulled up, they got their floats, people oh, had masks smart. on, but employees were social distancing when they were preparing things. So, you know, they were really checking all the boxes, right? And not endangering anyone. And that's what I, I really that they appreciate made it about a dri- the Did they make it a drive through or was it existing yeah. a drive through No, they made it a drive through So what they, you know, they basically, kind of like how a lot of people are picking up boxes of food at food pantries now, yeah, right? Yeah. They pull up with their cars and people drop the stuff in the trunks. And that's mm-hmm. what they're doing uh, with the root beer floats. And I thought that was a great way. And who doesn't enjoy a root beer float? Oh my gosh. Do you like root that beer floats? That actually makes me want to have a root beer float right now, legit. I know. Maybe I, that's absolutely. what I'll send you for your birthday. I'll just put some ice cream in the I mail today. That. <laughs> yeah, that will work. And with, with the speed at which the U.S. Postal Service is delivering things, I'm sure it'll still be frozen by yes. the time you get it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, my, and my ballot will probably be frozen in it. Right. Possible. So. <laughs> um, you know what's a good idea? Here's a good idea. Somebody should steal this idea. Speaking of drive throughs mm-hmm. I have heard, I don't know if you've been, but like I've heard drive through movies are becoming really popular. Yes. Which I kind of want to, I kind of want to go to a drive through movie, but that yeah. would be a great charitable event, wouldn't it? Like team I think up that's with a, great idea. a local movie theater and I don't know, maybe it's, minute, popcorn con- maybe it's the popcorn concept and you get free you, popcorn for, in exchange for a donation. Enough? Are you old no. enough, though, that you really remember drive-ins, no. like, as a comment? But now, see, you? I am. I am old enough that I remember driving. You're not that much older than me. Place. I know, but I'm thinking, like, you're really talking about, like, you're kind of coming at it from a millennial perspective. You know what I mean? Because you always kind of <laughs> push yourself compliment. to someone who's under 40 or at least thinks that way. <laughs> and so, you're, you know, you're saying, oh, these drive-in things. These I just are so think it's retro. Cool. You know, I remember retro. going to drive-ins and eating too much food, throwing up on the backseat of the car, Gross. you know, stuff like that. Okay, that's know? disgusting. But it is still a good <laughs> idea. You cannot argue with that. Yeah. Don't you think? Hey, hey do you want to, um, can I, do we have time that I can highlight one more campaign I really like? Yeah, and I want to highlight one too, but go ahead. Okay, here's the one I really you like. You first. Country Time Lemonade used to pay kids fines for operating illegal lemonade stands. You remember that? Yes. They were saying like in the States where they're illegal, we'll pay you fine. Yeah, yeah. This incredible stunt. And you know, I love stunts, right? <laughs> now that business has soured. Ha ha ha. I pun, see pun, your pun, little pun, air right? quotes. That's right. They are sending them stimulus checks. <laughs> right. So- <laughs> Here's your and, $14 kid. That's right. And that's adorable. You know and um, along those lines, too, <laughs> I was also sharing that uh, Mountain Dew has created a stimulus program that will pay for hunting and fishing permits in the Midwest, you know, and that's important because when those permits are down, actually, a lot of the, the funds from those permits go to fund, uh, fund conservation programs. Uh, so Does that's Mountain good. Do you have a big cons- conservation platform? I like, where did that so. come from? Hey, the mountain, right? I guess they're thinking the mountain here, you know, and uh, that is a stretch. And, but I do like the Country Time Lemonade. That's adorable. You know, so. I love that. Isn't that like, okay, you know, I love so, that. Yeah, we were paying fines. Now we're sending you a stimulus check. That's hilarious. Whoever came up with that, hats off, because that's hilarious. I love that. All right, here's my example. So this is a shout out to Chris Noble and his team at CARE. So Mm -hmm. way back in the day, you probably remember this too, Joe, World War II. um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) CARE Mm -hmm. launched this thing called CARE packages. And they, you know, would deliver these literal crates of you know aid and food to the post-war hungry and i think there were a hundred million of them delivered and obviously that kind of went away after Mm -hmm. world war ii uh recovery happened but when covid hit 
they did a couple of things. They were like, we're going to bring back the care packages, but they look a little different. Like now, instead of an, like an actual care package, they're calling it a care package, but it's like a MasterCard, you mm-hmm. know, money essentially, yeah. you know, to people in need. But they also, I don't think care had ever really had any operations in the U S but they realized that they needed aid to, you know, to the U S so they yeah. kind of ramped up stuff in the U S they have all these different ways that care packages work now from, you know, these debit cards to a couple of other things that they have done that I is, are escaping me at this moment. Sorry, Chris, wow, that's uh, but cool. they have all these corporate partners that have, you know, come alongside them, Oil Volet, MasterCard, PepsiCo Foundation, I think Band-Aid, they're doing something with them. So they have all these corporate partners that are coming in, you know, alongside them to kind of help them deliver these care packages. I just thought it was really clever. And I was like, that's pretty brilliant to kind of build upon your I'll tell you, legacy if there was and your anything, I- iconic care package. I love that. If there was anything that confirms America's status as a third world country now, it's that care is now supporting the U.S. That's nice. That's exactly <laughs> what they were going for. Yeah, that's I'm what they're sure going for. with that campaign. I'm going to talk to Chris Noble about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really think you should have said that out loud. That, that was an inside. <laughs> that was an inside thought, Joe. That's awesome. Yeah, but I think there's. I to your point, I think there's a lot of creativity happening out there, and I just love to see it. And I think yeah, we're going to see more right. of it. I mean, I think that's right. here's what I think. Here's my prediction. You heard it here yeah. first on Cause Talk Radio, and it's pretty grim. So I'm going to I'm going to apologize in advance. Yeah. But I think you're going to see more nonprofits struggling. You're going to see more businesses struggling because once PPE goes away and stimulus checks go away, at some point they have to run out, and at some point yeah. people run out of savings. So like, that's right. At what point? Like, what's the second tipping point of this yep. pandemic, like, and it's going to depend on whether there's a vaccine, whether yep. rates go down and whether yeah, the economy is starting to pick back up and whether jobs are created. There's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different variables, but at the same time, you know, I still think we're not done, you know? So I think no. there's more work to be done no. and it's going to no. be interesting to see how people are stepping up to support one another during this time. And I just love all the creativity and I don't know about you, yeah. but I think most people I've talked to are busier now than they've ever been. That's right. And I think that's the important thing right now. People are getting creative. They're thinking of different ways to do things. You know, they're looking at their assets in different ways, which I think is really important. So, uh, you know, but I agree with you too. I think in many ways too, Megan, the pain's only begun. And, um, and that, especially for small and medium sized businesses who are really coming along in terms of developing their programs. So, but one of the things, and I've mentioned this before, Megan, one of the things I'm really optimistic about this is in the midst of this pandemic, we have a whole basically generation of companies out there now that are being trained in purpose and knowing the value of yep. purpose and yep. why they should be engaged in the community and they should be engaged with their nonprofits and they should be, you know, doing everything from supporting their employees and their customers mm-hmm. to creating sustainable packaging. So I think the long term for us in corporate partnerships is actually very good. I think the short term is painful. But yeah. we'll get through it. Well, and I do think that, and I think we talked about this last time, you know, right now, purpose-focused marketing is really one of the only palatable forms of marketing. So yeah. who knows? You know, maybe some companies will dip their toe in and be like, oh, this is actually kind of cool. You know, companies that might yeah. not have done that before. So to your right. point, I think it, I think there are opportunities. And I think in the long run, hopefully it'll be better for everyone. That's right. Yeah. I agree. With those famous last words. You heard it here. That's right. On Cost yeah. Talk Radio. All right, Joe, where can people <laughs> find you online if they want to do that? If they want more Joe Waters, how can they how can they find you? Oh man, well, they should go by Selfish Giving. And as you know, the first thing they should do is sign up for my email newsletter, which it's goes been out religiously every Wednesday, only surpassed by yours at Engage for uh, Good. I don't know about that. Uh, but people could also find me on Twitter at Joe Waters. What about you, Megan? Where can people find you? I'm also on Twitter at Megan Strand. You can find a show notes for today's episode at uh, engageforgood.com and we will make sure we put links to Joe's fabulous newsletter and website and Twitter handle as well. So uh, we will look forward to chatting with you again. Let's not make it quite as long yes. next time for the next Joe yep. show because it's always always great to have you on and uh, we will talk to you guys real soon. Thanks for listening in. 